All right, brothers and sisters, be thankful. Be thankful for what you have. Today, brothers and sisters, we're going to pull one from the archives on thankfulness. And by the way, that was William Devon. A lot of people think that is uh, Curtis Mayfield singing that. Be thankful for what you have. But it was William Devon's, one of his biggest hits. Be thankful. And that's what we're going to look at today, being thankful, thankfulness. And as I said, we're going to pull one from the archives. And this is one that was before we were videoing. We have audio and we have a little special treat. You'll find a little video clip inserted inside this message. And brothers and sisters, let us be thankful. Okay, let's look at the prayer of thanksgiving and its implications on the Christian life and mindset and when we offer the prayer of thanksgiving. And in the Bible it says that we should, when we pray, we should believe that we receive. And I've heard pastors discuss the mechanics of prayer. That, that once we pray about something, uh, we initially offer that prayer according to the will of God, through our study and, and understanding of the will of God, then we, we, we offer the prayer of thanksgiving because we believe that we received it. And that is mechanically true But has it sunk down to the heart level and to the knowledge level? I think the prayer of thanksgiving can even go deeper than that. Once you get past the mechanics and you, you start thinking about when you really, in, in your life, when you really offered someone thank you. When it was something that you needed. And you didn't deserve it, and 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 you said thank you. I, I remember as a young, as a as a uh, teenager, early uh, in my early twenties, late teen years, nineteen, twenty years old, driving, had a car. My parents gave me a car. It was you know, and I was I was driving home. I was trying to make it home, and. Didn't have any money, and I was running out of gas. See, I, I didn't plan too good. Uh, I don't know all of the things that were going on in my life, with school, in and out of school and work, and, but I was I was heading home to to visit with my family. I didn't plan. Wasn't on my mind, but I didn't have enough gas to make it. And I was I was about 40 miles outside of home, and the needle was past E. <laughs> you know, it was you. You got that little. That's when I I really started looking at the needle and, and, the, and the, the notches on the fuel gauge. And I noticed, and even to this day, I still notice that the, at the empty mark, where it says E, it, it's, it's kind of little, it's a bigger hash mark than the, the regular little notches. It's a little bit bigger. I think maybe that's a little grace, I don't know. But it's not like the normal uh, three-quarter, you know, half and, and all the little notches. It's not the same size. It's, it's a little bit bigger. I don't know. Maybe that's it. I see that. Uh, maybe that's the, But when you're running low, when, you, when, when you're running on vapors, 
you kind of maybe mathematically or statistically you you're trying to figure out how much more can I go on this and you, you start seeing the tick that like a second hand ticking one second okay yeah I drove 10 miles and it did it moved in one second and so you and so in my mind I've divided that empty line that where it says e in the line I've divided that into I, I'm, I'm looking at it that hard that I've 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 see, I see other hash marks in it I'm halfway on the e <laughs> hash mark I, I, I've seen the needle move that much and I hope it the car was kind of it was an older car I know on the newer cars maybe the the needle registers a little better the measurements are a lot uh, more precise but I, I noticed that it, it moved a little bit. I'm, I'm only halfway of e on empty. <laughs> uh, 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 okay, I'm on that 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 three quarters empty uh, that on the way. I, I'm, I only got I got I got, I got a quarter taker of the empty. I, I got a quarter of an empty tank. <laughs> I moved from 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 a full empty tank to to a half a full empty tank to a quarter left of an empty tank and I knew once I got to that and this is going through my mind once I got to that quarter of an empty tank I said I need to pull over I don't need to just just keep running this car and, and just 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 conk out in the road I need to pull over and so I pulled over to a gas station and I didn't have credit cards at the time. I didn't have, that was before debit cards and, and things of that nature. And the popularity of ATMs wasn't really that. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't debit cards, so they, ATMs weren't that popular at that time. I don't even think I had a bank account. And I was sitting there at a gas station with no money, with no access. And I had to I had to get out at the car and and I asked someone. I gave him my story, I said Excuse me, sir. Um, and you know, I've I've seen it modeled. I've <clears throat> I've I've seen it happen to me. I've I've seen people, even in my young life, at at only eighteen, nineteen, twenty years old, I've, uh, people have come up to me at the store begging, <clears throat> asking for something asking for assistance let's let's say that we <clears throat> all three of those terms qualify they they need help you can say gleaming if you if you're a bible student you know about that gleaming but they need help and this is what they've chosen to ask for help. And I, I've turned people down and I'm sure we all have turned people down. I've heard that before. Wind the window up, ignore them. And only God can be the judge. But that day I needed help. This was before cell phones and things of that nature. But I, due to the circumstances of the situation, I asked someone, I said, sir, I, I'm trying to get home. And I, I don't have enough gas to make it. Can you help? 
and the, and the, and the guy said, "Yeah, you know, I've been there. I've been there. You know, and I guess he saw me, a young man, a teenager." And 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 this guy gave me twenty dollars. I was I was I was surprised. I, I got twenty dollars, and gas wasn't that expensive back then. I mean, uh, a few years ago, uh, five years ago, <laughs> it it wasn't that expensive, but that that gave me plenty. I can't remember if you said, well, how far are you going? I said, well, I'm just trying to make it into Houston. So I was about 40 miles out, 40, 50 miles out. And he gave me more than enough than what I needed. And... I just had a little four cylinder car, so I was able to drive on that gas for for a, a couple of days. Make it home and, and get around home. It was it was more than what I needed. And to this day that that scenario and that situation it It sticks in my mind when people come to me and ask me for things and especially at a gas station. <laughs> I'm kind of a softy. I'm a soft touch. If you if you catch me at a gas station, uh I'm I'm a soft touch. Cause that's that's a situation I'll never forget. I'm thankful for what that person, I've never met that person again. I, I may never meet that person. That person may never meet me or, or even recognize. We may not recognize each other, but I'm thankful for what my fellow brother, human being did for me. from the bottom of my heart when I couldn't do for myself someone else did for me and I'm thankful and while I don't I, like I say I never see per I can't repay the person I'm, I'm, I'm thankful and I think that's what we need to always remember and that's the the prayer of thanksgiving that we need to offer to god through jesus christ we need to thank jesus god thank you for, for jesus jesus thank you for what you did and 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 that that we need to that's what we need to put that that that's the oomph you know, if you if you if you're delivering a, a a presentation, or if you got a song, or or you're singing a movie, it needs to have that oomph. It just all oh, just kind of missed it. You know, you see a movie, it has a good plot, but it it's just something missing from from just okay, yeah, just a ho hum normal movie to that five star performance to that. That that Oscar winning performance and and this is what we need to have in our prayers of Thanksgiving. We don't we need to just recall and in the Bible in the Old Testament and the New the Lord tries to remind the people, remember what I did for you. When you between hell and high water, when the Pharaoh was coming down on you, 
And I'm sure that it, I hope your parents passed that down to you. If you wasn't there when it happened and you, you didn't experience, remember that. That's where you need to operate in that thankfulness. That's what you need to remember that. Remember when I delivered you from your enemies, from the Philistines. From the Babylonians, remember when, okay, well now y'all need to go into captivity. Remember when I delivered you out of Babylon. Remember that, get back to that, meditate on that, what was going on, how you, you were powerless. You couldn't do nothing. And then I came in. Remember that. You don't want to be there, do you? You don't want to be there helpless, can't go nowhere, out in the darkness, in the cold. And then I, I, I turned on the light and I showed you the way. And now that you're in the way and, and you've gotten fat, you've forgotten from where I brought you. And I don't hear that thankfulness I don't I don't feel it. I don't I don't feel that thankfulness in your prayers no more. And what little prayers you 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 offer. I, I don't hear that. And it is beneficial that you have that in you to continue on. Cause you, you're gonna lose your way. If you forget that thankfulness, you'll lose your way. It's a, it's a guiding force, that heat of judgment, and that goodness is drawing you. The goodness is drawing you, and that heat, if you remember that heat, or if you remember that feeling of loss and just, just, just lack, and, and just I, in, in darkness, with the helplessness, if you remember that, and I showed you a way, and I gave you a way. I provided a way. I, I, I provided you with more than enough. And and the goodness that you felt when I made a way out of no way. That's where thankfulness comes in. Is and it's not mechanics, and it's it's not the the uh it's the. Uh, Okay, I, I, I prayed for it, step one. Now we, we step two is prayer thanksgiving. It's not that drive. One plus two equals three. It's not that. It's, you have to have that, that. That's head knowledge. That's science. You have to put that heart in it. See, you, you feel that thankfulness. And you have to put those two together. That head and that heart has to come together. And then God, that 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 moves God. That that's that prayer thanksgiving. That's where you get it. And you have to stir that up, as some would say. That emotional component, that praise. And you see David many times when he looked at his situations, but he remembered the goodness of the Lord and how good the Lord had been to him in this situation, how, how the Lord brought him out of this situation. And even as, as Christians and even in our, uh, when we were, we're not always Bible, up in Christians and, and, and Bible reading Christians every situation that we have been brought out of was on account of the Lord in and out of this situation in and out of this relationship in and out of this wreck and accident still here In and out of this trouble, 
dodge this situation. That was the hand of the Lord on you. Even when you were not mindful. Even when you were not going to church. That was God directing my path back then when I was a teenager. Not, not necessarily in church. As I to show as a, as a, to show my thanks to the Lord I, the Lord was still good to me was still blessing me still blessing my family and the Lord blesses all of these people here today in this world that don't acknowledge him the atheists they still get the sun and rises and sets over all of us it rains. They're being provided for. And and people have no inkling. God is, is, is the furthest thing from their mind. And that is what's unfortunate. But that is also an opportunity in some respects for us as Christians to be ready if the opportunity arises to present the gospel to these people. And if we are to be effective at presenting the gospel to others, we must be firmly planted on the firm foundation of the gospel. We must not have fear in any situation. And if we go to Deuteronomy 7, Verse 17, we can practice this principle. You may say to yourself, these nations are stronger than we are. How can we drive them out? But do not be afraid of them. Remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. You saw with your own eyes the great trials, the signs and wonders the mighty hand and outstretched arm with which the Lord your God brought you out. The Lord your God will do the same to all the peoples you now fear. The Lord your God will do the same to all of the situations that you may fear of lack, of sickness, illness, of inadequacy, amongst others if we don't have any personal testimonies or recognized personal testimonies in our life we can rely on the testimonies in the Bible the biblical prophecies and histories and accounts of how our God has brought his people, those that call on his name out of situations that they could not bring themselves out of. This is why we meditate in the word. We can meditate upon David's trials and his tribulations and how the Lord brought him out of all of those situations. And we can place ourselves in his place, in his situation, as a character. And we can feel what he felt. We can feel the betrayal that he felt at the hands of Saul. We can feel his fear, his isolation, his loneliness, hiding from cave to cave. When we meditate upon this word, we can feel these emotions and we can rejoice when they rejoice. When the Lord brings them out. They were men and women the people that are in the Bible, the 
The individuals that we read about, they were men and women just like we were. We are today. They have the like passions that we have. And if we meditate in this word, we can reach the place of thankfulness that touches the heart of the Lord. And today, brothers and sisters, I pray that the eyes of our understanding and the thinking in our mind are enlightened to the glory and riches and wealth and provision that our Lord provides for us. And that we come into our Lord's presence with a heart of thankfulness with our prayers and with our actions. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Oh, brothers and sisters, there is none like our God. Oh, let us be thankful. Brothers and sisters, I hope this message was a blessing to you on thankfulness. And there are many beneficial reasons for us to be thankful. It improves our prayer life. It is a light that will guide us through this life. When we are thankful during the hard times, during the trials, during the tribulations, and especially during the temptations, when we are thankful of the goodness of God, when we are thankful for the goodness of our godly marriage, of our godly husbands and wives, and the blessings that we receive in the marriage covenant, it is beneficial for us as singles to be thankful that we are not engaged in sinful behaviors. Thankfulness will get us through these valleys and will bring us to the mountaintops. Brothers and sisters, it also improves our praise when we are truly thankful, when we dig down deep and find that thankfulness, if we need to remember the scriptures or if we need to remember our own past of sinfulness and depravity and darkness and lack or lack of being empowered, and when the Lord has brought us through, when the Lord has delivered us, brothers and sisters, it is so good for us to be thankful. It will guide us through this world. And I pray that this word of the Lord will come into us, that we are able to hear it and that it will change our hearts and minds according to the will of God. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen.